Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 239. Today we're going to talk about Rococo or Rococo. It's a new game from Eggert Spiel slash Eagle Griffin Games. Uh, plays two to five players. The theme of it is basically there's a gala event that's going to happen, some big to do in whatever world this is in. It's kind of a Baroque period, maybe post Renaissance kind of idea. And so all the players are basically clothing designers, designing dresses and suits for the attendees and also possibly uh, you know sort of the set design if you will they're also contributing to some of the decorations at this big mansion or this big sort of castle kind of idea so using your different types of workers you got apprentices and journeymen and masters uh, those are actually cards that you can play and it's got some very interesting uh, mechanics to the game uh, one of the designers Matthias Kramer I have reviewed a couple of his games and really enjoyed Glenn Moore and Lancaster it's also a team effort though Louis Malls and Stefan Malls also helped him design the game. So let's take a look at how the game works and I'll come back and tell you what I think. Now the first thing you can notice about the board here is you've got some different halls on different levels of this mansion. You've got some different decorations that you can sort of take possession of and score points on. There's a balcony at the top, uh, sort of a fireworks display, some other spots on the board. Now this is the side for two and three players. On the other side we have a board that's scaled up for four and five players. So you can see there's a lot more uh, different slots here, a lot more decorations and things like that. Here I've gone ahead and set up the board as you would see it at the start of the game. There's a couple of different areas that you can take actions on. It does look relatively busy, but it is relatively a straightforward game to play. Just a couple of brief notes before I talk to you how to play the game. You can see at the bottom here, we've got this row of dresses and suits here. So what a player might do is take the action here to make a dress. You can see the little icon there, which matches the icon on your player board. I'll go over more of that in a second. But you may take an action here to get the dress. This shows you sort of the requirement. You're going to need one of these gray cylinders, which is considered thread. You're going to need two cloths of that color, which you can acquire over here. And then you can either sell the dress and get the money, or this is going to tell you how many points it's worth on the other side. You'll take and put that out somewhere on one of these halls here, mark it with one of the discs in your collar, so this will score you some points at the end of the game. You can place it on some different spots and acquire uh, some different goods just by placing the dress out there. And then here you've got the area where you're going to acquire cloth and or some uh, lace and thread. You can hire new workers there. You can see there's a display of cards that you can get. Now each player has a hand or deck of cards in their color, so you can see the colors marked there. Everybody has the same identical deck here. You can see there's a couple of n things to note about the cards. So first you can see you've got a journeyman here. You can tell by the thimble there in the middle of the card. Here we've got a master, and then here we have an apprentice. Now, based on your player guide here, you can see that the apprentice cannot do these three actions here the journeyman cannot do this action only the master can do this action and of course the master can do any of these like that so you're going to be taking actions with your cards possibly getting some bonus actions based on the cards acquiring new cards in there getting dresses out uh, marking up some of the decorations and trying to get sort of an area majority on the different sections of the board here so to start the game players will get some money they'll get a lace which is the white cube and a thread which is the gray cylinder they'll get a bunch of discs in their player color and they get the little player board and then a little deck of five cards here so every round what you're going to do is you're going to take and choose three cards that you're going to want to play that round so maybe I'll choose a, an apprentice, a master, and a journeyman to do that now I'm going to play these as we go through here taking turns playing cards and then at the end or the beginning of the next round you're going to drop back up to three well at this point I've only got two cards so I'll have to use these two on my next turn then now that I'm out of cards in my deck I'll take and basically turn this back over and then I can choose one of these three cards here let's say this one here and add that there now as you acquire more cards and even as you acquire them during the round you can take those cards into your hand and then you can play them immediately that round and your deck will get a little bit bigger give you some more options per turn but you're always going to draw three cards and use those now there are six main actions in the game and you can take any of these actions by playing a card now, as i said earlier depending on the sort of level of apprenticeship and mastery you can do or can't do certain things so the apprentice cannot do this action here which is to get the queen's favor so you have to do that with a master or a journeyman which are again these two cards here like that 
So let's just talk about through all the different actions like so, and then I'll get into more of what the bonus actions can do. So you can play this guy, do a main action with this, and then if you want, you can take the bonus action here. Now you can skip the main action and skip this action if you want to, but you have to do them in this order. Do your main action based on one of those there, and then the bonus if you want to do both. And you can see all of the action spaces on the board have a matching little icon there, so it's easy to see where they reference. It's very straightforward and simple. This action here is basically to take the queen's favor card. You'll get $5 when you do that. And then if you take her on the last round, you get three bonus points. But basically what that's going to do is give you this, which is the first player marker. So this is pretty much just to get a little bit of money and then also take first player for the next round. The next action here is to go and acquire some basic materials for making the dresses. And here we can see we've got basically three rows of materials. There'll be a little pile there off to the side of face down. And when you go here, there's a couple of different things you can do. So you can see here it's got sort of a price chart here. So you can take anything from one of these three rows. If the row you want to choose from has all three items, you can see that there, you got to pay two dollars. So this one will cost me two dollars. If I were to go to one of these other three rows, other two rows here, this would also cost me two dollars. But now that this row has only two items left, this one's going to cost me a dollar. And then if somebody else wants to come along later and take this one, it'll actually be free. This is a very, very interesting uh, little mechanic. I quite like how this works out. Uh, there's a couple other mechanics sort of similar to this. But when you take these, you've got a choice. You can either take this and keep it, and you keep the cloth for possibly using an address later, or you can discard it immediately and then take the bottom part, which is either going to be uh, thread or lace or sometimes both. So that's basically uh, basically sending your apprentice, which it seems like we always send our apprentice to go do this because they can't do a lot of the other cool things. So you're going to use that card and then go and get that. So very quickly, one example of that, I maybe use the apprentice here to go and then purchase one of those there. And then you can also see his bonus action is to get another one. So you could go and buy one for two and then take another one from another row for free based off his bonus action. The next action you can do here is to actually make a dress. So if we just move slightly up here, you can see there's the area of the board. So associated with that. And we've got a nice selection of dresses to choose from. Now at the end of the round, if there are dresses in these two slots here, these are going to get discarded. These will shift down. Any that were bought, you know, obviously won't be there. New ones will shift down. And then you're going to draw dresses out of the bag here. I will make a quick note, my edition came with some extra like nine bonus tiles and those all seem to be focused on the blue cloth and the blue suits and dresses there. I'd say I really kind of like how that changes up the game and I think that's going to be like a BGG geek store thing or some other kind of promotional item. I would definitely get that because it does make the blue uh, colors a little bit more available and it kind of changes up the game a little bit. They're actually really rare uh, without that so I like the addition of that. Anyway. So when you go here, you're going to have to pay the amount above the dress. So they are going to get cheaper over time. So the ones on the right will be free. And so would you, let's say you wanted this one here, you'd pay $6. And then you would need to discard cloth matching that. So if I had this cloth here, it's got two green cloth like so. Now let's say I had these two items here. So I had two green and a yellow like so. So this is a little bit of overkill, but you know, you're going to find yourself sometimes having to discard this even with some extra cloth. Uh, that wasn't actually useful in making that dress. You don't get change or anything like that. And then also you can see a couple other things here. So if we look here, this one also will, re will require a lace cube. This one will require a thread cylinder. And then some of these have this little master symbol here. And this means you have to have played your master to actually construct that dress. It's a little bit more of a complex dress. You can see you can get a lot more money for it or even a lot more victory points than some of the more basic dresses. Now when you do this, you have two options. You can take and sell the dress, basically discard it, and get a nice big cash injection to help you do some of the other things on the board. Otherwise, you're going to take it, like I said, flip it over, put your disc on it, like so, and then you're going to put it out on the board. So as you can see here, there's a lot of different available slots where you can put your dress. So you're going to basically put it somewhere and then mark it. And there's a couple things to consider. Now you can see these spaces here. These mean that the dress had to be created by a master. The dress itself doesn't need the master symbol on it as long as you created the dress with the master. Of course you could do both if you wanted. So you can take and put that there. You can take it and put it on some of these other slots and get sort of a reward. So that one will give you $4, that one will give you a cube, this one will give you a face-up uh, material tile. 
different things like that. Now the thing that you're trying to keep in mind with this is you're really trying to get sort of area majority in each of these halls here. So at the end of the game, you can see whoever has the most dresses in this particular hall here will get four bonus points. Second place gets one. And up here in this big hall here, you get five and two. The middle section up here is actually divided into two halls. You've got this spot here, and then which separates the hall there and there. So you've got little area majority spots there, and then also the top row there. So you're trying to sort of get area majority as well as you know put some spots on, get the bonus items. Now, as soon as you have a dress in one, two, three, four, five of the spot. So you have a dress in each hall. You're going to put a one of your little discs up here and you can see the first person to do that will get six points. The second person to get in each hall will get two points. So there's also a rush to sort of spread out. Get a little bit of bonus points there. That's kind of nice. The next action you can do here, and you can only do this with the masters you can see because you can't do it with the apprentice, you can't do it with the journeyman, is to hire a new worker, basically get a new card. So here we've got a display of cards and to purchase these cards it basically works like the material. So you can see if all the cards are present, whoever wants to buy that is going to have to pay five bucks. So somebody comes and buys that, they got to pay five. Now there's only three left, so it's only going to cost three, and then one, and then the last card will be free. Now at the end of the round, all anything that's here is going to get wiped out. And you can see this little number on the top right, one, 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 and then you're going to deal off the deck for the next round, and you can see there's more ones, and it's going to basically go up in sort of an ascending order. So all the ones are shuffled together, all the twos, and then all the way down to the sixes here. So there's a couple of different uh, characteristics of some of these cards we'll talk about in a second. But they kind of come out in sort of the same order every game. So like I said, all the ones, the twos, and threes are shuffled together. And then you have a little bit of a knowledge of, you know, probably when certain cards will come out. But you're going to go here. Uh, again, only a master can do that, and you can add a new card. It goes directly to your hand, and you can play it right away that turn. So you maybe will get an extra card play on your opponents if nobody bought any cards that turn. The next action here is to repute one of your workers and so uh, normally what you're going to do is you're going to play the card uh, for himself and then you repute the card that you played and you're going to get that much money for it. So you basically get a way of getting them out of your deck. Uh, the rules say you're kind of like sending them into the service of the king. Now the apprentices will give you four dollars, the masters will give you ten, and then the uh, journeyman will give you seven. So you can do that to sort of thin your deck down. Now you can't ever get your deck smaller than four cards, uh, but that's one way of thinning your deck and getting some extra money. Now the last action here is to, has to do with the different decorations on the board. So when you take this action you're going to pay the amount of some of the different decorations on the board and you put your little disc there to show control of it. Now these are going to do a few different things. Having decorations in the fountain is going to generate for you extra income uh, at the end of the round. Now normally you get, everybody gets five dollars at the end of the round and then also whoever is in the fountain here is going to get the money based on that. So you can see the top row matches up with this little icon here, the bottom row matches up with this. Now what that's telling you is that you're going to get a dollar at the end of every round for each disc you have on a decoration if you have a uh, disc up there. And you could have you know multiple discs in here as well. Uh, this one is telling you you will get a dollar for every dress that you've marked out on the board there. So that's what the fountain does. Now each level of the halls here has musicians. You're going to pay that amount. It's going to give you basically bonus points at the end of the round. Uh, they're all over the place here. You can see here and there and there. And then at the top here is the fireworks display. You can see there's multipliers there. So you've got times two for 12, for 13, 14, 16, and then finally a times three for 22. I'll explain that in a second, but at the end of the game, you will also score the majority here for the most dicks in these uh, decoration spots as well over there. So the, whoever has the most decorations will get six and second most will get two. Now there's a tiebreaker if you're tied, whoever has the one to the right most will break the tie. And I should say the tiebreaker for the different halls for the majority is whoever has the most on these master spots. So those are important there for the end of game bonus. If there's still a tie with the masters, then whoever has the musician decoration will break the tie. So that's pretty much how a round will work out. You'll be playing masters and apprentices and things. 
doing the different actions, possibly taking some of the bonus actions, which I'll talk about in just a second. Basically, just trying to get your dresses out here in different areas, trying to get them on all the areas, get area control, get it, try to generate enough money, most likely through selling the dresses, to mark up some of these uh, different decorations, which I just realized I didn't talk about these. Now, these statues are interesting because as you get these controlled with your discs, you're going to take a look at the sets of all the dresses that you have on the board. So you can get sort of like eight points at most for a set. So for every set of all the different dresses, you get two points per dress. So if I had, let's say, eight dresses on the board and four of those were all a different color and then maybe the next four were like two yellows and two greens. So I could get two points for each of those different sets up to a maximum of eight. So let's just talk real quickly about some of the bonus actions on the cards. It does come with a very nice uh, aid on the back. And you can see, remember how I told you the cards kind of come out in sort of an order? Well, you're, you're going to know that these are the cards coming up in the first couple rounds up here. And you just take a look at these. And you can actually just kind of walk through these as you play the game, uh, you know, the first time. It's not too bad. Now, you can see these pink ones here. These are ones that are actually sort of end game bonuses. So in that sixth final sort of set of cards, there are uh, you know bonuses that you can just buy the card for that. You can still use them you know for their main action, but they don't have a bonus action. This is just an end game bonus that you'll look at and score. So let's say the two masters you start with, they don't have a bonus action, but like I said, with this guy, you can play him and then you can go and grab a tile. So I could play him to like, let's say, put out a decoration and then use his bonus action to grab uh, some thread or something. And then this guy here, you play him for his action, then you can pay a dollar one time and get either a thread or a lace. And then this guy, you can play him and you get two bucks. I'll just talk about a few of these here. I'm just going to go in backwards order. So like this one at the end of the game, for every set of, uh, you know, a man and a woman outfit out there, you get two points. Uh, this one you can do the uh, decoration action, but it's actually a cheaper by 10 bucks, which is quite a bit. So that can be very interesting. And you can kind of double up. So I could play him for his action, do one uh, decoration at full price, do another one for less than $10. Uh, this one you can turn in at the end of the game any extra sets of thread and lace for three points. Uh, this is, you know, you can spend three bucks to get a point as many times as you want when you play this card. This guy's going to give you bonus points based on the size of your deck, so the more cards you have actually the better in this case. Uh, this one's going to give you for every two pair of dresses you have on master spots, you're going to get three points, that's also nice. Uh, when you play this guy, you can do his action and then you get basically a buck for every dress on the board, pretty cool. Uh, when you play this guy for every two dresses, you get a point. Uh, this one is basically for either a one red cloth, one blue cloth, or uh, two of any other cloth. You can get points for those kind of at the end of the game. You play this for every two decorations you have on the board, you'll get a point. Uh, this is some more different ones back here. So here's a cool one. This guy, you can take a dress action, and when you do a dress action, you can actually reduce the cost of the thread by two red. So I could theoretically craft a dress normally with this guy and then craft another dress subtracting the two red. So this one I could just get for the thread and possibly the amount of money that it was in. So that's pretty cool. And you could craft two dresses and get them out there. Boom, boom. Now you cannot craft a dress with this bonus action. There's another card that does this as well. You cannot craft a master dress, you know, with that extra action there. Let's see what else we got. This one, when you play it, you can get a certain amount of money based on the cards in your deck. Uh, you know, for every three dresses, you get a point. This is another one where it lets you do a cheaper uh, decoration. There's all, you know, here's another dress one. This one, you get a point, a buck or two bucks for yellow and red dresses on the board. So these are pretty cool. You get these in your hand, you play them right away, and then you kind of kind of get them cycled into your deck and do different things like that. This one will let you draw a random uh, uh, material tile there. So that is pretty much how you play the game. You'd be buying new workers, you know, trying to craft dresses. Now there is sort of a different rarity. Like I said, the blue ones are definitely more rare uh, than everything else. And you're trying to locate some of the sweet spots. The master spots are nice because they're going to be tiebreakers. Some of the other spots are nice because they're going to give you a little bonus, you know, money and items and things. And you're going to really try to decide, you know, do I want to sell the dress and get a ton of money? probably to spend on a decoration or do I want to start getting the dresses out there quickly now there is uh, let's see one last spot here to talk about and that is the fireworks up here at the top 
And if we zoom in here, we can see something interesting. So during the game, when you go to buy decoration, you can mark these spots with your discs here. And then if you have a dress in this top row of the mansion here, when we go to score the game, you can take one of your dresses and move it to one of your Mark's fireworks spots, like so. And so at the end of the game, when we go through and count, all the points and all the dresses and all the jewelry or decorations and things like that, any that have moved up here are actually gonna get a multiplier. So this one, instead of worth two, it's gonna be worth four, and then you can get a, get a times three. But as you saw, there's also dresses worth four and five points. That's gonna be quite a bit of difference there. So you want your really high value items sort of up here with the sort of the elite upper echelon of the, uh, the folks in the house here. And that is pretty much the game. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the overview. Um, I actually like this game quite a bit more than I expected. Um, I didn't expect it to be bad in any, by any means. You know, it's got kind of a nice designer pedigree. I've liked a lot of Matthias Kramer's games. And you know, it looks like a nice sort of traditional, you know, Euro from Eggert Spiel and Eagle Griffin. Uh, but this game has kind of a lot going, on, going for it. Uh, one thing I like quite a bit about it is it has a little bit of deck building, you know, where you get the new cards, add them to your deck, and kind of cycle through. But it's not really a deck builder because you get to choose your cards, you know, like you get to choose the three cards and then you got to put the others away and you know that you've got to use those in your next round. And I like that because just the whole aspect of trying to figure out how many masters do I want to use this round because I probably won't have any masters next round because you want the masters to be able to hire new people that's the only person you can use to hire new people and that's important because you can get some of those nice extra abilities and things or even get more masters into your deck as those come out and the other thing you want to do is obviously get the master dresses which give a little bit better of a payout worth more points usually and you want to be able to put the dresses in the master spots because those are really sought after you know as you're kind of playing the game it looks like there's a lot of room on the board and there is for like the first two rounds but a lot of those spots get to start get gobbled up quickly and for the you know the bonus items and tiles and things and then the master spots kind of start going away and so it almost gets to the point sometimes at the end of the game where it's like all that's left is master spots and you don't have a master to get in there so it's like i can't get you know majority now because all that's left is a master and i didn't you know remember to keep a master or i used the master to get a card or something so i like that you've got to kind of base your decision off of that i don't usually base the decision too much off of uh, you know what the bonus ability is some of the ones that let you do sort of the extra um, decoration action or the extra dress making action those can be you know quite powerful and very useful obviously to get you know a lot of stuff out on the board quickly uh, but I like that instead of just a deck builder where you shuffle and randomly get stuff, you, you really can kind of seed your hand a little bit. And it kind of reminds me in the vein of, uh, you know, City of Iron kind of tried to do this and Class Road also kind of tries to do it. But in my mind, this kind of takes that sort of same sort of card choosing, sort of, you know, uh, almost a hidden hand and reveal kind of thing, but really does it in the right way because you have to really be considerate of what materials are in front of everybody's board, you know, what kind of dresses do you think they're gonna to try to make? Because, like I said, the blue ones are a little bit rarer, so if you, you know, just assume for yourself that you're gonna be able to make that blue dress, well, you know, you may not be able to get to that. And so, you, instead of kind of like just sort of a guessing mechanism like Glass Road has, this one is very, you know, well, you're able to well plan out, you know, you know, because you know kind of what's coming up on the next turn, and things like that with that it's more instead of just reveal oh we get to do the same action blah 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 this is much more methodical and a lot a lot more satisfying uh and i do find the game actually super thematic uh, as far as the euro goes because like i said you have the different types of workers you have the masters the apprentices and the journeymen and the apprentices have no business making dresses they're kind of running around sort of like a uh, you know like a gopher in movies you know basically go get me some coffee go get me some cloth go get me some lace and come back and you can watch me make these you know elegant uh clothes uh, so i like that aspect of it and you know you've got sort of the different uh, abilities that kind of go along with that I like the different echelons in the mansion. And one thing we were talking about the other day, or yesterday, uh, was it would be neat to see this sort of themed, um, like in a little bit more modern. Because a lot of, you know, board games, especially Euro games, they're set between like the Renaissance or Middle Ages up until, you know, like the 1800s or something. And they're always like in that time period, and that's kind of where this sits. But if you were to modernize it, and this is totally my American, you know, uh, 
centric attitude this is where I live so sorry but um, I totally I'm seeing and envisioning like a red carpet event uh, I mean you could do it like in the Cannes Film Festival you know for whatever I don't know why I'm worried about that but it, a more modern thing like you could do the Oscars that was the thing I was thinking of because that for American uh, you know that's kind of our culture here and you know we don't have a lot of cultural history going back that long um, whereas in Europe that goes back forever um, so on our side it would you could have like an Oscar event you could have this to be like the uh, Man Chinese Theater or wherever they do the Oscars and you know you you're basically like the Vera Wang and the different designers and you know you could be outfitting the different actresses and actors with their clothes and decorating the hall and all that stuff uh, that might be cool to maybe revisit that as if there was any desire or thought that it would be a mass market appeal I don't think it would be because it's there's a lot of icons and stuff but uh, yeah I think this could would be neat in a kind of a more modern theme I do like this theme though I like the idea of this this sort of upcoming event it's a new theme that you know you don't really see even though the time period isn't really that new um, the you know the idea of like okay well there's a big ball or gala or you know political event or you know event for the royalty or something and everybody's like worried about you know looking cool and trying to be all impressive and they want the really expensive gals so they can get up and then watch the fireworks at the end from the balcony and stuff that's kind of a neat idea and I like that even though you're more of a dressmaker you're still participating in sort of the set design or the uh, interior decoration of the event and kind of setting up the whole event as a, as a whole. Uh, so it's got a lot of cool things going for it. Uh, it really kind of strikes me, uh, as far as the recent games go, a lot kind of like Lewis and Clark. You've got sort of a row of cars you're going to buy and then kind of get your little engine going. Uh, Lewis and Clark is more of a race and this is definitely more of a Euro. I mean, Lewis and Clark is definitely a Euro, but it's definitely a racing game. It's a race to the finish. This has got a lot of things, area control, you know, resource management and things like that. Um, but the timing elements are still there because you're trying to grab those really high dollar dresses and the high victory point value dresses. So you've got to keep in mind what resources everybody's using. Uh, so yeah, so this one's staying in the collection for sure. Uh, I, you know, I kind of didn't expect it to stay in there because I really enjoy Lewis and Clark. And I do think that maybe certain folks will like Lewis and Clark better and other folks will like this better because they have a similar deck building element similar kind of mechanism some really nice interesting takes on the mechanism but i really like the whole purchasing of the cards and the uh the, the cloth tiles and things instead of like the dresses where it's kind of a through the ages oh stuff's just going to get cheaper and cheaper as it sits there this is sort of a almost a very light take on a supply and demand so the first guy in there is going to get the best thing but they're going to pay the most for it and then the other people are going to come in they're going to get something not quite as good it's not that swingy but they're going to get it for cheaper so that's kind of the benefit of waiting and you can maybe figure that oh well i really want that one but nobody else will want it so i'll hold off on going and buying that card and then i'll get it i'll get the thing i really want for cheaper so there's a little bit of gaminess that can happen there i really like that part of it okay i think i've talked enough probably got myself in trouble but uh definitely take a look at this it's a very small print run unlike lewis and clark um which is too bad because they're both excellent games uh so definitely take a look at this very easy to get into Plays great, uh, you know, different player counts and things. I haven't played with two, but um, I'm sure it's fine. Whatever. It, I don't usually, I don't usually like to play these kind of games with two. I don't know what. I mean, these games are not designed for two people usually. They're designed for three to five. Um, but it, it plays two, so if you have the opportunity to try it with two, I probably fine. Okay. Thanks.